pribadi bisa mempraktekkan apa yang mereka ajarkan. And you're gonna find that this morning we're gonna get very practical. Dan akan temukan bahwa pada pagi hari ini kita akan sangat-sangat praktis. We're gonna continue with the theme of get ready, get ready, get ready. Kita akan teruskan tema bersiaplah, bersiaplah, bersiaplah. But I want you to see how we're gonna very much take it from the theory to the practical. Tapi saya ingin mempertunjukkan bagaimana kita mengambil daripada teori dan menjadikan itu praktek. So as we prepare our hearts to do this, I'm going to invite you to please kneel with me as we approach the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful Sabbath morning that we can come together, press together, and worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, it's our desire to have heaven not simply come down, but that you might bring us up to heaven. Yes. Amen. Lord, we pray that you'll please forgive us of our sins, yes. that you will truly open our eyes and help us to behold wondrous things from your word. Yes. Amen. And may you give us a message this morning that will show us how we can better be a people prepared to meet our God. Amen. For Father, this is our prayer that we ask. Asking for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to turn your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 6. And in Romans chapter 6, you're going to find that there's a very important principle that we must make sure we live by and by God's grace die by. Dan di dalam situ kita akan temukan satu prinsip yang Tuhan berikan dan kita harus hidup dan mati oleh karenanya. And when you get to Romans chapter 6, I'm going to ask that you let me know by saying Amen. Dan kalau anda sudah tiba di Roma 6, katakanlah kata Amen. Amen. Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Dan di dalam ayatnya yang ke 16. It says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? Apakah kamu tidak tahu bahwa apabila kamu menyerahkan dirimu kepada seseorang sebagai hamba untuk mentaatinya, His servants ye are to whom ye obey. Kamu adalah hamba orang itu yang harus kamu taati. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Baik dalam dosa yang memimpin kamu kepada kematian, maupun dalam ketaatan yang memimpin kamu kepada kebenaran. Both the paths of sin as well as obedience and righteousness. Baik jalan daripada dosa atau jalan kebenaran are based upon our choices. Tergantung pilihan kita. Whenever you hear this term, surrender your heart to God. Bila mana saudara mendengarkan akan istilah menyerahkan hati kepada Tuhan. A lot of times people don't know well, what exactly am I surrendering. Orang sering tidak tahu apa yang akan diserahkannya. And what we need to understand is that the thing that we are surrendering to God. Dan apa yang kita perlu tahu, hal yang kita akan serahkan kepada Tuhan. Are all of our choices. Semuanya adalah pilihan kita. This is what it means to surrender yourself to God. Ini artinya menyerahkan diri kepada Tuhan. Everything that you and I do should be based on choosing to do God's way rather than our own. Segala pilihan kita, segala yang kita buat itu harus didasarkan atas pilihan mau melakukan kehendak Allah. And this is what Paul is talking about in Romans 6 where he says to whomsoever you yield or choose yourself servants to obey that's who servants you are. Inilah yang dimaksudkan oleh Paulus di dalam ayat ini bahwa kepada siapa Anda pilih atau ikut tadi itulah yang Anda menjadi hambanya. If you understand what I'm saying, let me hear you say amen. Kalau Anda mengerti maksud saya, katakan amin. Now, understanding that, my mind goes back to the presentation we did earlier this week. Dengan mengatakan hal ini, teringatlah saya kepada presentasi kita sebelumnya. 
We saw, according to the Bible and according to the spirit of prophecy, that there is going to be a great crisis that is going to come to this world. Kita melihat berdasarkan Alkitab dan Roh Kudus bahwa akan terjadi krisis besar bagi dunia ini. That crisis is called the mark of the beast. Krisis itu disebut panda binatang. The mark of the beast is the enforcement of Sunday observance. Tanda binatang adalah pemaksaan pemeliharaan hari Minggu. It is going to start in America, but it is going to reach to all the world. Itu akan dimulai di Amerika, tetapi akan pergi ke seluruh dunia. Which includes Indonesia. Termasuk Indonesia. We are all going to be faced with this crisis. Kita semua akan berhadapan dengan krisis ini. And there are many individuals today that say, Do we as Seventh-day Adventists really need to focus on this Sunday law issue anymore? Dan ada orang yang bertanya, apakah kita orang-orang Adven perlu untuk membahas, membahas akan masalah pemeliharaan hari Minggu ini? And the only way that we can make a statement or have such a thought as that, mengapa kita harus membuat pemikiran atau pernyataan seperti ini, is when we do not clearly understand what inspiration has said. Kalau kita tidak jelas apa yang disampaikan oleh pena inspirasi. The reason I say this is because in the book Great Controversy, page 608, itu sebabnya di dalam buku Great Controversy halaman 608, it says as the storm approaches, bila mana badai itu semakin mendekat, it says a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message. Ada satu golongan yang besar yang tadinya mengakui uh, menerima pekabaran tiga malaikat, but who were not sanctified by obedience to the truth, tetapi tidak dikuduskan oleh penurutan akan kebenaran, will abandon their position, akan meninggalkan posisi mereka, join ranks with the opposition, bergabung dengan jajaran oposisi. And become the most bitterest enemies of their former brethren. Dan menjadi musuh-musuh yang paling ganas daripada teman-teman mereka sebelumnya. Don't tell me that we don't have to herald the Sunday law issue to our own people. Jangan katakan kepada saya kita tidak perlu untuk mengamarkan tentang masalah hari Minggu ini kepada umat kita. There is going to be a great number of our own people. Akan ada sekelompok besar daripada umat-umat kita sendiri as a result of lack of preparation akibat mereka tidak bersiap that when the Sunday law test comes to us sehingga ujian hari Minggu itu ketika tiba kepada kita we will surrender to the beast power and become our most bitterest enemies of our former brethren. Kita akan menyerah kepada kuasa binatang itu dan menjadi musuh-musuh yang paling ganas daripada saudara-saudara kita. And therefore, brothers and sisters, I have a question. Oleh sebab itu, saudara-saudaraku yang kekasih, saya mempunyai satu pertanyaan. What would cause such a large class of God's people? Apakah yang akan membuat begitu banyak daripada umat Tuhan who come to church Sabbath after Sabbath yang datang ke gereja Sabbat demi Sabbat worshiping God in spirit and in truth berbakti kepada Allah dalam roh dan kebenaran who ultimately will get to a point yang akhirnya akan datang kepada satu titik that the same God and the same message that we profess to believe dan Allah yang sama dan pekabaran yang sama yang mereka akui percayai we will turn our backs on Jesus and his message akan berbalik belakang kepada Yesus dan pekabarannya and receive the mark of the beast dan menerima tanda binatang I found out why dan saya terbuka mengapa Would you like to know why so many Seventh-day Adventists are going to turn away from this message when the Sunday law test comes to us? Saudara ingin tahu mengapa begitu banyak umat Adven yang akan membalikkan diri daripada pekebaran ini bila mana tes hari Minggu itu tiba? Notice what God says to us through his testimonies. Perhatikan apa yang Tuhan katakan melalui testimoni-testimoni. Watch this. Inilah. The time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. Waktunya tidak lama lagi bila mana ujian ini akan tiba kepada setiap jiwa. The mark of the beast will be urged upon us. 
Tanda binatang akan dipaksakan kepada kita. Here we go. You're about to find out why so many seven day Adventists are going to receive the mark. Tidak lama lagi akan temukan apa alasan mengapa banyak sekali orang Adventist akan meninggalkan. Those who have step by step yielded to worldly demands and conformed to worldly customs, mereka yang langkah demi langkah menyerahkan diri kepada tuntutan dunia dan mengikuti kebiasaan kebiasaan dunia. Will not find it a hard matter to yield to the powers that be. Tidak akan mendapatkan kesulitan untuk menyerah kepada kuasa kuasa yang akan datang. Rather than subject themselves to derision, insult, threatened imprisonment, and death. Daripada mereka itu mengalami penistaan, diolok-olok, diancam, dipenjarakan dan mati. The contest is between the commandments of God and the commandments of men. Pertandingan ini, kontes ini adalah di antara perintah Tuhan dan perintah manusia. Now there are many Seventh Day Adventists today that see problems in the church. Sekarang ini banyak orang Adventist memang melihat bahwa ada permasalahan di dalam gereja kita. And what many of them do is they break away from the church and try to start up their own separate independent churches. Dan mereka buat adalah mereka keluar daripada gereja dan membuat akan gereja-gereja independen mereka. They do this because they say we see a problem in the church. Mereka mengatakan ini karena mereka melihat ada permasalahan di dalam gereja. And they think to themselves we must solve the problem. Dan mereka mengatakan bahwa kami harus selesaikan masalah ini. But the great mistake that they made, tetapi kesalahan besar yang mereka buat, is they did not understand that God was already on His job. Mereka tidak tahu bahwa Allah sedang melakukan pekerjaannya. God is going to have a purified church. Allah akan mempunyai gereja yang dimuliakan. And the way He's going to have it, dan caranya Ia akan mendapatkan hal ini, is He says in Amos chapter nine and verse nine. Dan dia katakan di dalam Amos sembilan ayat yang kesembilan, that I am going to shake the house of Israel. Saya aku akan mengguncang rumah Israel. And though the shaking started in the days of Ellen White, walaupun pengguncangan ini sudah mulai pada zaman Ellen White, it is going to finish with this Sunday law issue. Ini akan diselesaikan tuntas pada waktu masalah hari Minggu. You said, brother Lemon, how could you say that? Oh, Pak Lemon, bagaimana ini bisa terjadi? Because inspiration said it first. Karena inspirasi sudah mengatakan lebih dahulu. It says in this time. That's the Sunday law. Pada waktu ini, ini saatnya buku hari Minggu. The gold will be separated from the dross in the church. Maka emas akan dibedakan daripada yang sampah di dalam gereja. When this crisis comes to us as God's people, bila mana krisis ini datang kepada kita sebagai umat Tuhan, only the real Christians will be able to stand. Hanya orang-orang Kristen saja yang sejati yang bisa berdiri. Right now there is wheat that looks like tears. Pada saat sekarang ini ada yang gandum yang lihatnya seperti and there and there are tears that look like wheat. Dan ada lalang yang nampaknya gandum. And sometimes we don't know which is which. Dan sering kita tidak tahu yang mana adalah yang mana. But God says I know which is which. Tapi Allah mengatakan aku tahu siapa yang mana itu. That I have an experience that I'm going to allow to come to my people. Dan Allah berkata saya akan izinkan suatu pengalaman yang akan terjadi kepada umatku. That's going to cause a great exposure. Yang akan menyebabkan suatu eksposur atau pencerah penyataan yang sesungguhnya. And the real Christians will finally be seen. Dan orang-orang Kristen sejati akhirnya akan muncul. You see, brothers and sisters, the great issue that is taking place right now. Sudah ada verifikasi. Ketahuilah bahwa permasalahan yang besar yang sudah terjadi saat sekarang ini. Everything that we are doing every day. Apapun yang kita buat setiap hari. Is taking us down one of two paths. Akan membawa kita kepada salah satu daripada dua jalan. Either the path to receive the mark of the beast, yaitu jalan untuk menerima tanda binatang, or the path to receive the seal of the living God. Atau jalan untuk menerima meterai Allah. And do you know what's going to make the ultimate decision? Dan anda tahu apakah yang akhirnya akan membuat keputusan final? It's going to be your yielding. Yaitu tergantung penyerahanmu. 
It is the decisions that you and I make every single day. Adalah keputusan-keputusan yang anda buat setiap hari. That is going to ultimately determine whether I receive the mark of the beast or the seal of God. Adalah yang akan menuntut anda untuk memilih apakah memilih tanda binatang atau apa dari Tuhan. And that's why the Lord has impressed upon my heart this morning. Itu sebabnya Tuhan telah menyatakan dan menyerah menghimbau kepada hati saya pada pagi hari ini. To talk to God's youth and adults, agar saya bicara kepada orang muda dan orang dewasa, and deal with the topic that we will entitle guidance when making decisions. Maka topiknya adalah tuntunan pada saat membuat keputusan. If there is one thing that we all have in common, bila mana ada sesuatu hal yang kita semua miliki, is that every day throughout the day, bahwa setiap hari sepanjang hari. We all have to make decisions. Kita semua harus membuat keputusan. Some of us are making decisions that are constantly yielding to worldly demands and conforming to worldly customs. Sebagian daripada kita membuat keputusan yang menyerah kepada tuntutan duniawi dan konform atau menyesuaikan diri dengan kebiasaan dunia. I believe that it is a shame that I have to teach Seven Day Adventists about proper use of music. Adalah suatu hal yang memalukan sebenarnya bahwa saya harus mengajar kepada orang yang sudah apa cara musik yang benar. But do you know why many of our young people have issues with music? Anda tahu kenapa orang-orang muda fan mempunyai permasalahan dengan musik? It's because they've been yielding to worldly demands and conforming to worldly customs. Adalah karena mereka sudah menyerah kepada tuntutan-tuntutan dunia dan menyesuaikan diri dengan kebiasaan. It is a shame when a man has to come before his own people and teach them the proper ways of courtship and marriage. Adalah suatu hal yang memalukan bahwa ada seorang yang harus berdiri di hadapan umatnya dan mengajarkan bagaimana bertunangan dan kawin yang benar. But do you know why so many of us believe that we must have some Something called a soulmate. Dan anda tahu mengapa banyak daripada kita ada yang harus menyatakan bahwa kita mempunyai belahan jiwa kita? Is because we've been yielding to worldly demands and conforming to worldly customs. Oleh karena kita telah menyerah kepada tuntutan dunia dan menyesuaikan diri dengan kebiasaan-kebiasaan dunia. It is hurtful when God's people who received the health message in 2011 we still have to have Sister Irene come before us and tell us about the importance of keeping the health message. Ada sangat menyakitkan kepada kita umat Tuhan yang hidup pada tahun 2011 ini dan mengundang ini, tolong ceritakan kembali apa kebenaran Tuhan mengenai kesehatan. But you know why that we have conformed to all those fleshly parts of Egypt? Tapi saudara tahu mengapa kita sudah menyesuaikan diri dengan bejana-bejana daging daripada Mesir? Is because we've been yielding to worldly demands and conforming to worldly customs. Adalah karena kita telah menyerah kepada tuntutan-tuntutan duniawi dan menyesuaikan diri dengan kebiasaan-kebiasaan dunia. If the truth be told, bila mana kebenaran itu dikatakan. There are many of us by the way that we make our decisions day by day. Ada banyak di antara kita yang dengan cara kita mengambil keputusan hari demi hari, we are on our way to hell while we're singing when we all get to heaven. Kita semua di dalam jalan menuju neraka padahal kita menyanyi. And God loves us too much to believe a lie. Dan Allah begitu mencintai kita agar jangan sampai kita percaya suatu dusta. And therefore He says that my people need to know how to make decisions. Jadi sebabnya Dia mengatakan saya mau umatku tahu caranya membuat keputusan based on inspiration. Tidak sahkan atas inspirasi. And so we are about to go into the study guidance when making decisions. Oleh sebab itu marilah kita belajar mengenai tuntunan pada saat membuat keputusan. And I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Kings chapter 3. Dan saya ingin saudara-saudara untuk membuka kepada satu raja-raja pasal yang ketiga. You remember that King Solomon was reigning as king at this time. Anda tahu bahwa pada saat ini Raja Sulaiman sudah menjadi raja. And there was two women who had children. Dan pada saat itu ada dua wanita yang mempunyai anak-anak. One woman's child died. Salah satu anak dari wanita itu mati. And another woman's child is gone. Dan masih ada lagi yang satunya. Well, the woman whose child died, she was so brokenhearted over the fact that her child died. Dan ibu yang anaknya itu sudah mati ini sangat sedih. That she took a desperate measure. She found the mother with the living child sleeping. Dan dia temukan hal yang sangat luar biasa. Dia menemukan ibu dan anak yang masih hidup itu. Sudah tidur. She took her dead baby. Dia mengambil bayinya yang sudah mati. Went to the woman who had the living baby. Pergi kepada ibu yang anaknya masih hidup. 
took her living baby and so she was her dead baby. Dan menukar kan bayinya. And then the day went on. Kemudian hari berlanjut. Well, obviously the mother who realized when she woke up that this baby was dead in her arms. Dan ketika ibu itu sadar baru oh ini anaknya sudah mati. She clearly was able to see this is not my child. Dengan jelas dia tahu ini bukan anakku. She goes to the other woman and says, "You have my child. Give me my child back." And they go through this battle of back and forth on whose child is whose. Dan mereka bertempur mempertaruhkan siapa anak. Ultimately, Solomon now has to make a decision in this issue. Akhirnya Solomon harus membawa membuat keputusan di dalam permasalahan ini. And the Bible says something beautiful in 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 28. Dan ada hal yang indah di dalam ayatnya yang ke-28. The Bible says that after Solomon exercised wisdom in helping the individual pick the right child, ketika Solomon telah membuat kebijaksanaan sehingga yang benar mendapatkan anaknya yang benar. Notice what the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 28. It says, and all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged. First Kings three twenty-eight. It says, and all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged. And the word judgment or judge is the decision he made. Seluruh Israel mendengarkan mengenai keputusan yang dibuat oleh raja, yaitu uh, yaitu keputusan dari mana sang raja. So therefore, what helped Solomon make this decision? Notice the next verse or the next statement. It says, "And they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment." Maka takutlah mereka kepada raja sebab mereka melihat bahwa hikmat daripada Allah. Solomon was able to make a decision because God gave him wisdom to make the right decision. Sulaiman mampu membuat keputusan karena Allah memberikan kepadanya hikmat kebijaksanaan untuk membuat keputusan itu. One of the first things you and I need to realize whenever we have to make decisions in our life. Hal pertama yang kita harus ketahui bila mana kita harus membuat keputusan dalam hidup ini is that we lack wisdom adalah bahwa kita kurang hikmat and therefore we need wisdom makanya kita butuhkan hikmat so that we can make the right decisions agar kita bisa membuat keputusan keputusan yang tepat. You see, most people make decisions today based on how they feel. Banyak orang dewasa ini mengambil keputusan berdasarkan apa yang mereka rasakan. But notice what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14. Tetapi apa yang dikatakan Alkitab di dalam Amsal yang ke-14. One of the greatest problems that many of us, even as God's people, have today when making decisions. Banyak keadaan permasalahan bila mana umat Tuhan bahkan dewasa ini bila mana akan membuat keputusan. Is a lot of times we make decisions based on how we feel about something. Kita mendasarkan keputusan kita atas dasar perasaan perasaan kita. Or the way something seems to us. Atau sesuatu hal yang nampak kepada logika kita. But notice what God says in Proverbs 14 and verse 12. Tetapi apakah yang dikatakan oleh Tuhan Amsal pasal 14? The Bible says there is a way which seemeth right. Unto a man, ada suatu jalan yang nampaknya benar kepada seseorang. It says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Tetapi ujung-ujungnya adalah jalan kematian. Just because something seems right, karena sesuatu hal itu tampaknya benar, or even feels right, ataupun bahkan berasa seperti benar, it might smell right and it might even taste right. Oh, harumnya begitu benar dan rasanya juga begitu baik. It does not mean that it is right. It will never be bought again. You know, brothers and sisters, I remember a time that I met a young lady in my life. Lalu saya berkata saya teringat ketika pada satu waktu saya menemukan seorang wanita cantik dalam hidup saya. And I ran home to my mother and father and said, Mom and Dad, I met Mrs. Wright. Oh, kaya lain pada ayat ini pun saya dapat mengatakan, Oh, saya sekarang telah mendapatkan nyonya benar. And then, as time passed by, dan ketika waktu berlalu, I realized that Mrs. Wright was Mrs. All Wrong. Saya temukan bahwa nyonya yang benar adalah nyonya segala kesalahan. How many times have we made decisions and we just knew this is the right one? Betapa sering kita ada dalam keadaan oh inilah keputusan yang benar saya tahu itu. And 
discovered, Lord have mercy, I was all wrong. God says there's a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof can literally lead to death. Tapi akhir itu bisa secara literal menuntut kepada kematian. A lot of times people say, Oh, but but Lord, I know, I feel it in my heart. It's gotta be right. Oh Tuhan, saya rasa di dalam hatiku bahwa ini harus memang benar. We make decisions that we say, Oh God knows my heart. Dan kita mengatakan, Oh Tuhan tahu isi hati saya. And you're right. Dan memang ada benar. You know God knows our hearts so well that He wrote about it. Tuhan sangat tahu kenal akan hati kita dan dia tulis mengenai hal itu. Let me show you what God said about your heart and my heart. Apa yang Allah katakan mengenai hatimu dan hatiku? Go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Yeremia pasal yang ke-17. In Jeremiah the 17th chapter, yaitu pasal yang ke-17. Such beautiful fundamental scripture. Ini adalah ayat-ayat yang sangat fundamental begitu indah. Notice what the Bible says in verse 9 about your heart and my heart. Perhatikan apa yang dikatakan Alkitab di dalam ayat 9 tentang hatimu dan hatiku. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9. Yeremia 17, 9 mengatakan, The heart is deceitful above all things. Betapa liciknya hati lebih licik daripada segala sesuatu. And desperately wicked, who can know it? Hatinya sudah membatu. Siapa kaya dapat mengetahuinya? Why in the world would you trust something that's desperately wicked? Mengapa di dalam hidup ini anda percaya kepada suatu hal yang sudah membatu atau sudah jahat? When we make decisions, we must understand we cannot trust our hearts. Kalau kita mengambil keputusan kita harus ingat jangan percaya hati kita. We cannot trust things that even sometimes seem right. Jangan kita percaya kepada hal yang tampaknya benar. We are going to need something that the Bible calls wisdom. Kita perlu sesuatu hal yang Alkitab sebut sebagai hikmat kebijaksanaan. And that wisdom is not of an earthly nature, but it's of a heavenly nature. Hikmat kebijaksanaan yang bukan sifatnya dunia, and the wisdom is dari surga. How do I get it? Dan pertanyaan yang paling penting, bagaimana saya bisa mendapatkannya? Go to the book of James chapter one. Mari kita buka kepada Yakobus satu. James chapter one, notice what the Bible says. Yakobus satu perhatikan apa yang dikatakan oleh kita. And you know the reason why I love this study. Oh, kenapa saya sangat mencintai akan pelajaran ini? Is because as I told you, it's very practical. Karena saya katakan ini adalah sangat praktis. You will find that some of the areas where we slip the most. Anda akan temukan bahwa Wilayah atau hal-hal di mana kita sering terpleset is when it is what we call having to make small decisions. Yaitu bila mana kita membuat keputusan-keputusan yang kita rasa kecil. For some reason, when it comes to the big great events of life, kalau itu datang kepada peristiwa peristiwa besar dalam kehidupan kita, we say, oh yes, I need to pray and I need to search the word and I need to get counsel and do all these things to make right decisions. Saya harus berdoa, saya harus baca kitab, saya harus mendengar kitab. But when it comes to things that are considered by us to be small, tetapi kalau kita bertemu dengan hal-hal yang dianggap kecil, we don't understand that many times we find ourselves not making the same efforts to make sure we make right decisions on small things. Kita seringkali tidak membuat upaya-upaya yang kita harus buat bila mana membuat keputusan-keputusan yang besar. All of a sudden, we believe sometimes that we have this natural wisdom that we can make at least small decisions. Oh, kita percaya bahwa kita sudah ada suatu hikmat alami sehingga kita bisa mengambil keputusan terhadap hal-hal kecil yang kecil. And let me show you the power of what happens in small decisions. Anda bisa melihat. Saya tampakkan bagaimana kuasa bila mana mengambil keputusan yang kecil. Keep your finger on James 1:5. We'll go to the book of Luke chapter 16. Taruh tanda tetap di dalam ia. Kau buka satu ayat yang kelima. Tapi sekarang buka. Now in Luke the 16th chapter, I'm going to show you the power of small decisions. Lukas pasal yang ke lima belas. If we would make painstaking efforts, brothers and sisters, to make sure that we're doing the will of God in the small decisions, kalau kita membuat upaya-upaya yang besar untuk menjamin bahwa setiap keputusan perkara yang kecil, watch what would happen when it comes to the larger decisions. Apa itu yang akan terjadi bila mana kita menghadapi keputusan-keputusan besar? The Bible says in Luke 16 and verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least, barangsiapa setia dalam perkara-perkara kecil, 
is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in that which is least is unjust also in much. Every time I counsel with God's people and they tell me all the struggles that they're having in ministry and all these different problems in life. One of the first things that I begin to ask them. I ask them, tell me how you deal with some of the small decisions in life. And you know what's amazing? Nine times out of ten, if not ten times out of ten. People who have problems in big areas of their lives, you can see it's, there's a direct connection between how they handle little problems in life. The Bible promises us if you're faithful in little things God says what's happening is you're indirectly conditioning your mind to be faithful in larger things you know Jesus when he died on that cross and he rose up on that third day when Jesus rose up you can only imagine how anxious he was to ascend back to heaven to the Father to make sure that his offering was acceptable Betapa rindu di dalam hatinya agar dia bisa kembali kepada surga dan memastikan bahwa persembahannya itu diakui. And would we agree that that was an important point in Christ's life to ascend to the Father, make sure the offering was acceptable? Bukan kali sangat penting baginya bahwa dia harus pergi dan berhadap kepada Bapa dan meyakinkan bahwa persembahannya itu. Yes, would we agree? Yes. Do you? Now, brothers and sisters, as important as it was for Jesus to fly out up to heaven and make sure that his offering was acceptable to God, do you know what the Bible says he did first? The Bible says that before he ascended up to heaven, he first took his clothes and he folded them. Jesus was such a man of attention to detail that the Bible says that he had his robes on one side and the napkin was on the other side folded deeply. Even Jesus, our example, understood faithfulness in that which is least. And if we are going to reflect the lovely image of Jesus fully before he comes, First John chapter 2 and verse 6 says, As he walked, so ought we also so to walk. Dan di dalam satu Yohanes mengatakan bahwa sebagaimana dia telah berjalan demikian juga kita harus berjalan. And so when we have to make decisions, we're going to need wisdom, amen. Oleh sebab itu kalau kita mau mengambil keputusan kita perlu hikmat. And notice how James spells it out in James chapter one. I told you to keep your fingers on James one. Dan saya katakan kepada saudara tetaplah di Yakobus pasal yang pertama. And in James chapter one, notice what the Bible says in verse five. Di dalam satu Yakobus satu ayatnya yang kelima. It says in James one five. Dikatakan di dalam Yakobus satu ayat yang kelima. If any of you lack wisdom, jika lo ada di antara kamu kekurangan hikmat, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. Biarlah ia meminta kepada Tuhan yang memberikan dengan leluasanya. And upbraideth not. And it shall be given him. Itu pasti diberikan kepadanya. When it comes to the day-to-day decisions that you and I have to make, 
Muslim sehari harian yang anda harus buat, whether it be small or whether it be great, apakah itu keputusan kecil atau itu keputusan besar, we need wisdom. Kita butuh hikmah. And the Bible says if you don't have it, ask for it. Alkitab mengatakan kalau anda tidak punya itu minta. And if you ask for it in faith, believing, the Bible says God will give it to you. Dan Alkitab mengatakan bila mana kita minta dan kita percayai hal itu maka Tuhan akan menggerakinya. That means before I even get up off my knees. Itu artinya bahwa sebelum pun saya berdiri daripada berlutut, when I have asked God for wisdom, kalau saya telah minta kepada Allah minta hikmat, I have to do what is natural Christian courtesy. Saya harus melakukan sopan santun Kristen, and I will thank God for giving it to me before I even get up. Bahwa saya harus mengucapkan terima kasih bahwa saya seakan-akan sudah menerimanya sebelum pun saya berdiri daripada dua saya. Now there are other steps that we need to take. Ada langkah-langkah yang lain yang kita harus buat. Notice what the Bible says in Psalm 66. Apakah yang dikatakan oleh Alkitab di dalam Mazmur pasal yang ke-60? We're talking about guidance when making decisions. Ini adalah tuntunan pada waktu kita mengambil keputusan. Now in Psalm 66 you will find a very important instruction. Di dalam Mazmur 66 anda akan menemukan akan satu perintah yang penting sekali. The Bible says in Psalm 66 in verse 18. Dan itu ada di dalam ayat 18. It says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Seandainya ada niat jahat dalam hatiku, tentu Tuhan tidak mau mendengar. So if you and I are honestly going to approach God now to let Him be the guide for our lives to make decisions, kalau pada saat sekarang ini secara jujur kita mau pergi kepada Tuhan untuk menjadikan Dia sebagai penuntut dalam membuat keputusan hidup kita, we must make sure that there is nothing harbored in my heart that is against His will. Kita harus pastikan bahwa tidak ada sesuatu yang ada di dalam hati kita yang melawan kehendak Tuhan. You know, brothers and sisters, there was a time in my life that I used to dance professionally. Saudara yang terkasih di dalam sejarah hidup saya, saya pernah menjadi seorang penari profesional. And when I joined the Seventh Day Adventist Church, I was still a dancer in the hip hop and R&B industry. Ketika saya menjadi Advent, saya masih menjadi anggota daripada hip hop. It was a hard stronghold to let go of. Ini adalah suatu kekuatan yang sangat kuat. And I remember one time that there was someone who called me. His name was Heavy D. Dan pada satu waktu ada seorang yang namanya Heavy D. Dia panggil saya. He was a major hip hop artist at this time. Dia adalah seorang artis hip hop pada waktu itu. And he called me and he said, I want you to come on tour with me. Dia mengatakan saya ingin anda untuk tour bersama dengan saya. And he said, I will pay you forty five thousand dollars per month. Dan saya akan membayar kepada anda empat puluh lima ribu dolar setiap bulan. And at that time, my faith was weak and I was broke. Dan pada saat itu iman saya lemah dan saya ini bangkrut. And I told them, I said, well, I'll go with you because I wasn't convinced that dancing was wrong at that time. Dan pada saat itu saya katakan saya akan ikut anda karena saya belum yakin bahwa berdansa itu adalah berdosa. And I said, I'll go on the tour as long as you let me get Sabbaths off. Saya akan ikut tur asalkan hari Sabat saya itu bebas. But he said no. He said Friday nights are our big concert nights, so we need you to perform. But what you can do is perform, and then afterwards you can go to your room and enjoy your Sabbath. Dan dia katakan oh tidak bisa karena Jumat malam itu adalah performance kita yang besar. Anda boleh menari habis itu ya silakan anda ke kamar. But then one day while I was on the tour and I was breaking Sabbath every week, dan saya ikut tur dan saya melanggar hukum Sabbat setiap minggu. Conviction started to rest on my heart. And I lived in the idea that no journey had been made. Because when I gave my heart to Jesus, it was genuine. Ketika saya memberi hati saya kepada Yesus itu adalah jujur. There was a love relationship that was developing between me and Jesus. Ada suatu hubungan kasih sayang antara saya dengan Yesus Kristus. And I'll never forget it. Right there in Beverly Hills in California. Dan saya tidak bisa lupa di Beverly Hills di California. I'm in one of these plush, beautiful hotels. Saya berada di hotel mewah. And I had a desire to worship. Dan saya mendapatkan satu kerinduan untuk berbakti. I miss God. Saya merindukan Tuhan. So I decided that you know what? I'm going to go ahead and worship God, even though I knew that I was going to sin against Him tomorrow. I raise that. Dan saya memutuskan saya tetap akan beribadah kepada Tuhan walaupun besok saya akan melanggar dan tidak menuruti hukum. And I used to be part of the Pentecostal church. 
La Biblia es real cuando Pentecostal. And when in the Pentecostal church we had this habit when we did Bible study. Dan bila mana di gereja Pentecostal kami mempunyai kebiasaan ini bila mana mempelajari Alkitab. When we were in Bible study, we would just open up our Bible and we would put our finger on a text and wherever my finger landed, that would be my devotion. Dan kita akan buka Alkitab sembarangan tanpa jari di mana pun juga dan itulah yang akan menjadi ayat renungan kita. So that night When I knew tomorrow I'm going to break the Sabbath anyhow, I decided to open my Bible, put my finger on the text, and meditate on that text. Pada malam hari itu, ketika saya tahu besok saya akan melanggar hukum Tuhan, melanggar hari Sabbat, saya membuka Alkitab dan menaruh jidat saya kepada suatu ayat. Guess where my finger went? Kira-kira di manakah jari saya itu menyentuh? Proverbs 28 verse 9. Yaitu di dalam Amsal 28 ayat yang ke-9. You know what Proverbs 29 says for us? Anda tahu apa yang dikatakan Amsal 28 ayat itu? The Bible says that he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Amsal 28 ayat 9. Siapa memalingkan telinganya untuk tidak mendengarkan hukum? Juga doanya adalah kekejian. God says that when we regard iniquity and sin in our hearts, Allah mengatakan kalau kita menghargai akan dosa dan pelanggaran di hati kita, and we refuse to open our hearts and let the Lamb of God take away that sin, kita menolak untuk membuka hati kita dan membiarkan anak domba Allah mengambilnya. It's not just that God says I will not hear the prayer. Allah tidak mengatakan tidak hanya akan tidak mendengar akan doa kita, but He says your prayer will be an abomination to me. Ya katakan doa untuk kekejian bagiku. Do you know there are people today that are asking for God's guidance in their lives? Dan tahu bahwa pada saat dewasa ini ada orang-orang yang memintakan tuntunan Tuhan di dalam kehidupan mereka, while they hate their own brothers and sisters that they see every Sabbath. Tapi mereka membenci saudara-saudari mereka yang mereka temui setiap hari Sabat. While they hate their mothers and their fathers. Mereka benci ayah dan ibunya. Brothers and sisters, how can we shake hands and wish each other a happy Sabbath? Bagaimana kita bisa betul-betul menjabat tangan mengatakan selamat Sabat? When we harbor bitterness, anger, and resentment in our hearts towards our own brothers and sisters. Kalau kita mening ada di dalam hati kita yaitu kepahitan, marah kepada saudara-saudara kita. And have the nerve to stand before God's people and minister to them. Dan mempunyai keberanian mau berdiri di hadapan Tuhan dan melayani. If we want God to guide us in our decisions day by day. Kalau kita ingin agar Tuhan menuntun kita di dalam keputusan hari demi hari. We must let Jesus, that wonderful Lamb of God. Kita harus memilihkan Yesus yaitu anak doa Allah yang indah. Take away our bitterness, anger, and resentment. Mengambil segala kepahitan, kemarahan, kebencian kita. We must let it in our hearts to take away all of those darling sins that we will not let go. Ijinkan Tuhan ambil akan dosa-dosa kesayangan itu dari pada kehidupan kita. When you and I open our hearts and say, Lord, take my heart, for I cannot give it. Kalau kita berkata, Oh Tuhan. Inilah hatiku, ambillah karena aku tidak bisa menyerahkannya. Keep it pure, for I cannot keep it. Tetap murnikan, sucikan dia karena saya tidak bisa menyucikannya. When that becomes our sincere prayer, kalau ini menjadi doa sungguh-sungguh dari diri kita, Christ will not only take away the iniquity. Tuhan tidak hanya akan mengambil akan kejahatan ini, but He will give us back His righteousness. Tetapi Dia akan memberikan kembali kebenarannya kepada kita, and He will guide us in our day-to-day decisions. Dan Ia akan menuntun kita di dalam keputusan sehari-hari kita. Now this is a very in-depth study. Ini adalah sumber pelajaran yang sangat. And I know so much I can give it all to you. Dan saya harap saya bisa masih memberikan itu kepada saudara-saudara sekalian. But I'm watching my enemy, which I call the clock. Dan saya melihat musuh saya yaitu jam dinding. And the Bible teaches us to love our enemies. Dan Tuhan mengajar kita untuk mencintai musuh kita. So I need to respect the time. Jadi saya hormati akan waktu. Matthew chapter four. Matthew pasal yang empat. Matthew chapter four. Matthew empat. I pray that one day I can get this whole thing out to God's people. Oh, saya berdoa bahwa satu hari kelak saya akan bisa memaparkan ini kepada umat Tuhan. Not that I'm the only one that has it. I know many of you. Bukan karena hanya saya lah yang tahu hal ini. 
But it's my passion, brothers and sisters. Tapi ini adalah suatu keriduan yang sangat daripada diri saya. So we learn God's principles on how to make decisions. Kita ingat prinsip-prinsip Allah untuk mengambil keputusan. Whether it be small or great. Apakah keputusan kecil atau besar? It's amazing how God can do this. Oh, luar biasa bagaimana Tuhan bisa berkata. Now Matthew 4, verse 4, a very popular verse. Mari sobat ayat empat kita semua tahu akan hal ini. It's interesting how the most popular verses are the least practiced. Adalah sangat menarik bahwa ayat-ayat yang paling terkenal adalah yang paling sedikit di. It says in Matthew 4 verse 4. Dikatakan di dalam Matius 4 ayatnya yang keempat. But the answer is said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Tetapi Yesus menjawab, ada tertulis manusia hidup bukan dari roti saja. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Tetapi dari setiap firman yang keluar dari mulut Tuhan. Man is not to conduct his lifestyle or his decisions based on what he thinks is right. Manusia tidak untuk membuat pola hidupnya atau keputusan-keputusannya berdasarkan apa yang ia pikir benar. You and I are to conduct our lifestyle and make our decisions based on the word of God. Kita harus menjalankan akan pola hidup kita dan keputusan-keputusan kita berdasarkan firman Tuhan. And this goes from the smallest decisions to the greatest decisions. Ini mencakup kepada keputusan-keputusan yang kecil dan juga kepada keputusan-keputusan yang besar. Do you know men and women that before you take any garment of clothing off of a rack in a department store. Dan saudara itu tahu akan ada laki-laki dan perempuan mereka akan pergi ke department store dan mereka akan mengambil sembaran jenis pakaian. Did you know that you are first to understand what God says about proper Christian dress before you choose your clothes? Tidak ada saudara tahu bahwa anda harus tahu prinsip untuk pakaian Kristen orang Kristen sebelum anda pergi membeli belanja pakaian. And you know the reason why this is such an issue? Anda tahu mengapa ini menjadi suatu permasalahan besar? Do you believe that iniquity separates us from God? Saudara percaya bahwa kejahatan itu memisahkan kita dari Tuhan? Do you believe that? Yes. So do you believe that separation from God is a terrible thing? Anda percaya bahwa pemisahan daripada Tuhan suatu hal perkara yang sangat buruk? Do you know what is separating us from God more than any other power on earth right now? Anda tahu apa hal yang paling memisahkan kita daripada Tuhan daripada kuasa apa pun di atas dunia ini sekarang ini? Does anybody know what it is? Anda tahu apa itu? I will tell you. Saya kata. And I can tell you my opinion, or I can tell you what Jesus says. Which one do you want? Anda mau pendapat saya atau apa yang Yesus katakan? Oh, oh! I promise you, my opinion is nothing. I'm dust with voice. Oh, dan saya berkasi kopi di saya itu tidak ada. Yang saya hanya suara Tuhan. Volume four of the testimonies to the church, page six hundred and forty-seven. Testimonies, jilid empat, alamat six forty-seven. Enam empat tujuh. I quote. Saya kutip. Obedience to fashion. Penurutan terhadap mulai is pervading our Seventh-day Adventist churches. Sedang begitu melanda orang-orang gereja-gereja Adventist. Watch this. And is doing more than any other power to separate our people from God. Dan melakukan lebih daripada kuasa yang lainnya untuk memisahkan umat kita. End quote. Titik. Fashion. Mode, dress, pakaian, more than any other power, lebih daripada kuasa yang lain. Dress reform is a much deeper topic than most people believe. Reformasi pakaian adalah suatu topik yang lebih dalam daripada apa yang dipikirkan kepada kita. And any man or woman or minister or ministry that tells you it is trivial, their message has not come from God. Dan apapun pria, wanita, pendeta atau ministry yang mengatakan bahwa hal ini perkara kecil, mereka itu tidak berasal daripada Tuhan. I hope and I pray. Saya berharap dan saya berdoa that the YCs, the Army Bible Boot Camps, all the different organizations that have meetings all throughout this planet. I YC, Army dan segala pertemuan-pertemuan yang ada di atas planet bumi ini. I hope and I pray that we will make a deliberate effort to address this issue. Saya berdoa dan berharap agar kita membuat suatu keputusan untuk menghadapi urusan ini. Because I've never seen Israel in the Bible experience revival and reformation by ignoring a problem. Saya tidak pernah melihat Israel bisa menang di dalam 
ke perjalanan hidup mereka di atas dunia ini kalau mereka itu mengabaikan suatu problema atau permasalahan. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to dress, when it comes to diet, when it comes to lifestyle, when it comes to education, when it comes to our homes, when it comes to any decision we have to make. Kalau itu datang saudaraku di dalam rumah tangga kita di dalam pola makan uh, kerja dan apapun juga keputusan yang kita harus buat, we must make sure the word of God supports our decisions. Kita harus meyakinkan bahwa firman Tuhan mendukung setiap keputusan kita. Now I have a question. Sekarang saya mau bertanya. Do I have five minutes? Bolehkah kita lima minit? Yes. 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 Go to the Proverbs 15. Mari buka di dalam Amsal yang ke-15. Connect with the Word of God. I want you to see something else that the Bible counsels us we should do. Selain daripada firman Tuhan lagi, maka ada yang dinasihatkan oleh firman Tuhan kita. Man, I love this stuff. Seriously, this thing gets me excited. Oh, this is a powerful study. Ini adalah satu pelajaran yang sangat gembira sekali. It is sweet. Sangat manis. Proverbs 15 and verse 22. Amsal 15 dan ayatnya yang ke-22. Connected with the Word of God that is to guide us. Dan perhatikan akan firman Tuhan yang akan menuntun kita. The Bible says in Proverbs 15:22, Amsal 15 ayat 22 yang berkata, It says without counsel purposes are disappointed. Proverbs 15:22. Begitu. Rancangan gagal kalau tidak ada pertimbangan. But it says but in the multitude of counselors they are established. Tetapi terlaksana kalau penasihat banyak. All right. So therefore, we see that one of the things God tells us is that we must also receive counselors. Amen. Kita melihat di sini bahwa Tuhan inginkan kita mendapatkan nasihat. So that what we can do is we can understand that while we go to the Word of God for counsel, apa yang kita bisa buat kita tahu di sini bahwa kalau kita harus pergi kepada Firman Tuhan untuk mendapatkan nasihat. There are men and women of God who have gone through many experiences above and beyond what we've gone through. Ada banyak pria dan wanita Tuhan yang sudah mengalami pengalaman-pengalaman yang kita sedang alami. And we can go to them to receive counsel so that we can it can help us make right decisions. Dan kita bisa pergi kepada mereka untuk mendapatkan nasihat-nasihat bagaimana untuk kita menyelesaikan permasalahan kita. But tetapi. It was a multitude of counselors that killed Jesus. Adalah banyak nasihat yang membunuh Yesus. And they were people who had lots of experience. Dan mereka itu orang yang berpengalaman. So while it is true that we should look to counselors and people of experience, there's a very important point that many people miss when we deal with the multitude of counselors. Ya benar, selagi benar bahwa kita harus pergi kepada banyak penasehat dan meminta penasehat ada sesuatu amaran mengenai kalau kita mau pergi kepada orang banyak untuk mendapatkan nasihat. And if you miss this, brothers and sisters, you literally can miss heaven. Dan kalau saudara miss dalam hal ini, anda juga bisa miss surga. Go to Psalm 119. Marilah kita kepada Mazmur 119. In Psalms the 119th division. Yaitu pada Mazmur 100 yang ke-19. I want you to see what God says to you and I in verse 24. Apa yang Tuhan katakan kepada saudara saya ayat yang ke-24. You see, I believe that in a multitude of counselors there is safety. Saya percaya bahwa di dalam banyak yang penasehat-penasehat ada keamanan. But notice what God says there are His counselors above and beyond anything else. Tetapi lihatlah kenasehat Allah di atas daripada segala nasehat. The Bible says in Psalm 119:24, the Bible says, "Di dalam Mazmur 119 ayat 24 berkata, 'Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors.' Ya peringatan-peringatanmu menjadi kegemaranmu, menjadi penasehat-penasehatku. And the testimonies of Jesus is manifested through the Bible and the spirit prophecy, the writings of prof of the prophet of God, Ellen G. White. Dan Testimoni-testimoni daripada Tuhan itu adalah Alkitab dan Roh Tuhan, yaitu tulisan-tulisan daripada Jaliah Tuhan, Nyonya Ellen G. White. I have no problem listening to human counselors. Saya tidak punya masalah mau dengar nasihat daripada manusia, as long as their counsel is subject to the inspired counselors. Asalkan nasihat mereka itu tunduk kepada nasihat daripada nasihat-nasihat ilahi. When a man counsels you, but he does not tell you where from the Bible or the 
spirit of prophecy, where it comes from, be very afraid of that counsel. We are living in a time where man is exalting his opinion above the words of God. That if that counselor cannot instruct us based on what the Bible and the spirit of prophecy says, brothers and sisters, find another counselor. And many times when you can't find a human counselor, then suddenly you can't find a human counselor. Yes, manusia, you'll be amazed at what the inspired counselors can do for you that sometimes human counselors can't do. If I'm a parent and I have a little child and I need counsel on how to work with that child, I can go to the Bible and I can pick up a little book called Child Guide. Which is God's testimonies, and I didn't know how to raise my child. If I am a husband or you are a wife, there are problems in the Adventist home. The bila mana kita suami dan istri mempunyai permasalahan di dalam rumah tangga Advent, I can pick up God's inspired counsels of the Bible and the book Adventist home. Saya bisa mengambilkan Alkitab dan buka buku. If I'm having problems understanding the Bible, I can exercise the method the Holy Spirit teaches in Isaiah 28, but I can also go through the Conflict of the Ages series, which gives me a profound understanding of the Bible. Saya bisa pergi kepada Yesaya 28 dan saya juga bisa membaca Alpha dan Omega satu seri daripada inspirasi. If I am having problems in the church trying to work with the brethren that we can unite and fulfill the great gospel commission to go ye therefore, I can go to the Bible and I can go to the nine volumes of the testimonies to the church. Dan kalau saya mempunyai permasalahan bagaimana gereja ini bisa pergi keluar sana dan mengabarkan pergi dan ajarkan semua bangsa bangsa, maka saya bisa pergi ke Alkitab dan sembilan volume testimonies. If I am a young person and I realize that there's so much danger in the world that I cannot participate in their amusements and I'm looking for an option, I can go to the Bible and I can pick up a little book called Messages to Young People, which shows me recreation instead of rep the creation. Saudara yang dikasih dalam masa saya orang muda dan menginginkan permasalahan dengan orang-orang muda dalam pergaulan saya bisa lihat kepada Alkitab dan kepada satu buku yang namanya Nasihat bagi orang muda di mana disalahkan kita harus rekreasi dan bukan rek atau hancurkan cita. All thy testimonies are my counsels. Semua Peringatan-peringatanmu itu adalah penasehatku. And God says that this is a way that I can guide you in making decisions. Dan Tuhan mengatakan inilah caranya saya bisa menuntut anda untuk membuat keputusan. I have learned, brothers and sisters, that when people ask me for counsel, sudah berterima kasih bila ada orang yang minta nasihat kepada saya. I share not how much experience I have. Saya membagikan pengalaman-pengalaman yang saya miliki. And I share not how little experience I have. Dan saya tahu betapa sedikitnya pengalaman saya. If I can guide that mind to the God to God's testimonies, bila mana saya bisa menuntun akan pikiran itu kepada testimoni daripada Tuhan. I can let the testimonies of Jesus, who has more experience than any minister on this earth. Saya bisa membabilkan kepada kesaksian Yesus yang lebih berpengalaman dari manusia siapa pun juga. We can let Him guide us. Dan dia kan dia yang menuntun kita. And you know, because this is a YC, a youth conference. Tapi karena ini adalah suatu konferensi orang muda. You know, we listen to Pastor Gay says he he challenges us and charges us to go forward in the work. Don't worry about money and all these things and to trust God and to finish the work. Dan kalau kita melihat David Gay membawakan panggilan, ayo kita pergi keluar sana. Tak usah pikirkan mengenai uang. Percaya kepada Tuhan. But sometimes people say, all right, I I want to finish the work, but I don't I don't know where to begin. I don't know what to do. I don't understand what's my life worth. Oh yeah yeah betul saya. Tapi saya tidak tahu apa harus saya buat ini, bagaimana dengan nafkah, bagaimana dengan rencana hidup saya. But do you know what I have a little counsel for you? 
That counselor is called the book Education. And in that little counselor book called Education, page 262, it has a chapter, it has a chapter called The Life Work. And it says on page 267. Oh, listen to this, especially our young people. Sometimes people in general, especially our youth, has sometimes more than one good option to choose from of what direction they should go in ministry. Is that right? Yeah. And sometimes you're struggling saying, which option should I choose? What's the specific place God would have me work? You know what the little counselor education page 267 says? It promises. You will know, I'm quoting, you will know the specific place God has designed for you by your capabilities. What that tells me is that number one, there are specific places of work God has designed for you. Two paragraphs down from that quote. She says there are many who have gone in ministry that would have been better as nurses. She says there are some who have gone and become lawyers that would have been better as ministers. We must understand there is a specific place that God has desired for each and every one of us in this room. And one of the key ways that you will know the specific place God has designed for you it is by your capabilities. What skill sets, talents, what is it that God has given me that I know I can do and I also have a, a passion for doing If you're married, you begin to talk to your spouse. What are some of my capabilities? What have you noticed? You go to parents and those who are closest to you that know you well and you ask them what are some of the things you've noticed are my capabilities. And what you do is you have a list of all these capabilities. You get on your knees with that list. You go ahead before the Father and say, Father, I need wisdom based on these capabilities you've revealed to me to show me the specific place that you have designed for me. And I was reading another one of God's counselors called Desire of Ages, page 668. That time, Desire of Ages, You know what Desire of Ages, page 668 says? God will speak his mysteries to you personally. Tuhan akan menyampaikan misteri-misterinya kepadamu secara pribadi. When I made the decision to go into full-time gospel ministry in the self-supporting work, bila mana saya mengambil keputusan untuk menjadi penginjil self-supporting sukarelawan di dalam pekerjaan ini, my wife is a homeschooling mother of our four children. Istri saya itu menyekolahkan di rumah empat. I was making I was making over two hundred twenty thousand dollars per year. Saya menghasilkan dua ratus dua puluh ribu dolar setiap tahun. And now God was calling me into full time self supporting work. Dan sekarang ini Tuhan memanggil saya untuk pekerjaan yang 
berdikari penuh. And you know one of the things that I did? Ya sudah tahu apa yang saya buat? Is I went to counselors. Saya pergi kepada para nasihat. These are the human ones. Inilah manusia-manusia. And I asked the counselor. Dan saya minta nasihat mereka. And they left an excellent example before me. Dan mereka menuntun saya dengan percontohan yang baik sekali di hadapan. Not one of them ever said you should do this. Tidak ada di antara mereka mengatakan anda buat ini. And they were smart for doing that. Dan mereka itu cerdas karena mereka melakukan seperti itu. Because had I done what they told me I should do, seandainya saya melakukan apa yang disuruh oleh mereka, if I would have experienced any failure. Dan jika saya mengalami kegagalan, I will hunt those brothers down and say, look what you did. Saya akan cari orang itu dan saya akan lihat apa yang kau katakan. They were very wise men. Mereka orang-orang yang sangat bijaksana. Every time I went to them, what do you think I should do? Setiap kali saya datang kepada mereka, apa yang harus saya perbuat? They said, well, God's inspired counsel says this. Oh, firman Tuhan yang inspirasi telah mengatakan ini. They always sent me back to inspiration. Mereka selalu kembalikan saya kepada ilham Tuhan. And they promised me based on inspiration. Dan mereka menjanjikan kepada saya berdasarkan ilham Tuhan. God will speak to you personally. Bahwa Tuhan akan menyampaikan itu secara pribadi kepada mereka. I remember I was riding on the road after preaching at a church one Sabbath. Pada satu hari saya sedang mengendarai di perjalanan pulang dari gereja setelah berkhutbah. In my morning devotion, I was reading the book Ministry of Healing. Dan di dalam perjumpaan pada pagi hari saya membaca Ministry of Healing. And I remember I was driving on the road, and it was now a weekday. Dan saya sedang mengendarai pada hari kerja biasa. And like most people, I was worried about the finances. Dan sebagaimana banyak orang saya khawatir tentang keuangan. And I said, Father, I am I am a husband, a, a father of, of four, and I'm the only one that brings an income. Are you sure this is the route you want me to go? Bapa, saya ini suami daripada istri empat anak. Apakah anda betul betul yakinkan saya bahawa saya harus masuk dalam pekerjaan ini? And as I'm driving down Route 142, I remember it so clear. Dan ketika saya berjalan di Route 42. And as I'm driving down that road, all of a sudden my cell phone rang. Ketika saya berjalan tiba-tiba saya punya HP berbunyi. And I picked it up and it was a brother from Bermuda. Dan saya angkat ada seorang saudara dari Bermuda. Who I met at past Sabbath that I was preaching at that church. Dan saya ketemu ini ketika saya berhormat di gerejanya. He said, dear brother, he says I really appreciated the message that you gave, and you know I just wanted to express my thanks. I'd like to make a donation to your ministry. Oh saudara ku saya begitu terkenal dengan hormat saudara dan ministry yang saudara buat saya ingin memberikan satu sumbangan kepada anda. And I remember that as he told me that normally with small little ministries like mine, you know, I don't get these big, large, gates type donations. Dan sejauh ingatan saya, sepertinya saya ini yang mempunyai ministry yang kecil tidak mendapatkan dana dana besar seperti dana David Gates. Average donations were probably, you know, fifty dollars or sixty dollars, which is all right. Oh, saya menerima lima puluh dolar, enam puluh dolar. Okay, itu pun baik juga. Adventist Home says pennies turn into dollars. Ah, sekarang ini. Amen. Jadi dolar, dolar. So I said, well, brother, that's very kind of you. I said, no problem. He says, go to the local Walmart and put this code in, and they'll give you the money. Lalu dia katakan, saya katakan terima kasih banyak anda begitu baik. Dia katakan ambil kode ini pergi ke Walmart dan kemudian berikan kode mereka dan berikan uangnya. Nah, I don't know how many of you go through this in your devotions. Dan saya tidak tahu bagaimana saudara membuat hal-hal ini. But when I have devotions, it's like God is speaking in stereo to me. Kalau saya membuat renungan, saya seakan-akan Tuhan berbicara dengan stereo kepada saya. And sometimes I'm going across pages and verses, and sometimes the Spirit of God will say, Hold up, look at that again. Dan bila mana saya melewati ayat-ayat dan halaman-halaman Tuhan menunjukkan, eh ulang lagi itu, baca lagi. And that morning he did that on a specific area of ministry of healing that I was reading, and the Spirit of God was saying, look at that quote again, look at that quote again. And I just kept looking at it, but I didn't really understand. Okay, I mean I see the point, but what's the big deal? That's what was going on in my mind. Saya sedang membaca renungan dari mana ministry of healing lalu kemudian saya tergerak ulang lagi, ulang lagi. Ya saya memahami, tapi untuk apa? Well, now I'm going to Walmart to go ahead and get this brother's donation. Lalu saya berjalan pergi ke Walmart. Saya mau ambil akaran sumbangan dari para saudara itu. I give the lady the code and she opens up her register and she reaches in the register and she pulls out a hundred dollar bill. 
Dan dia saya berikan kode, kasir itu mengeluar, membuka lalu memberikan saya selembar uang seratus dolar. And when I saw the hundred dollar bill, I said, "Wow, praise the Lord! I mean, that's that's bigger than average donations." Lalu ketika saya melihat harga uang seratus dolar itu, saya katakan, "Oh, puji Tuhan ini lebih besar daripada yang biasanya." But what was strange is she didn't stop. Yang mengherankan dia belum selesai. She pulled out another hundred dollar bill. Dia mengangkat seratus lagi. Then another hundred dollar bill. Seratus lagi. And then another hundred dollar. Seratus dollar. And another one. And another one. And she stopped at the tenth bill. Then he had an empty by the young school. It was a thousand dollars. Sorry, good on that. Here's what touched me. As soon as she put the tenth bill on the ground and closed the register, ketika dia mengambil akan bil yang ke sepuluh lalu dia tutup akan register alat kit kasirnya. The spirit of God spoke to my heart and said, "Do you remember the Pope in the next video?" Tuhan Roh Tuhan menggerakkan saya. Ingat apa cara tadi? You know what the quote said? Apa hal yang kutipan itu katakan? I have a thousand ways of which you know not one of how I can take care of you. Aku mempunyai seribu cara di mana kau pun tidak mengetahui satu pun. Trust God. Percayalah kepada Tuhan. Trust God. Percayalah kepada Tuhan. He will guide you. Dia akan menuntun anda. He will show you how to make decisions. Dia akan menuntun anda untuk membuat keputusan. He will give you wisdom. Dia akan memberikan hikmat. He will give you his word. Dia akan memberikan pekerjaan. He will send us counselors in written and human. Tapi ramu memangnya ada. Dia akan memberikan kepada kita penasehat penasehat. Bible says he will guide you with his eye continually. Dia akan menuntun anda senantiasa dengan matanya senantiasa. I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that I am in the place God has assigned for me. Saya berada di satu posisi yang saya pahami dengan tidak ada bayang-bayang keraguan-keraguan. You have no idea what peace that brings to one's heart. They know they are in the place God has assigned for them. Belum tahu dan betapa jelasnya Tuhan akan menuntun anda. Belum tahu anda di mana di titik mana anda harus berada. Trust God. Percaya saja kepada Tuhan. Brothers and sisters, as you trust God, as saudara saudara ku bilang, as saudara percaya kepada Tuhan, you can number your days. Apply the muscles, number your days, apply the muscles. Anda bisa mengukur akan hari hari itu dan kemudian menerangkan akan hikmat. You claim that it doesn't promise that says he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to its completion. Pada hari itu Tuhan berjanji baik itu akan membawanya sampai kepada Akhir yang penuh kemenangan. When you leave this place, as we're 